Hey, look at this. It's a nice Silicon Graphics Octane workstation. It was made in the late 90s, and lots of people want Silicon Graphics workstations because their eBay prices are pretty, pretty high. We're talking several hundreds of dollars for a system that might have been found in someone's basement or something. Well, well, here's the deal. Um, I got this for 25 bucks at the local surplus sale. And I've had nothing but fun with it. And I put fun in quotes because, well, you're going to see why. I'm going to show you a lot of the fun parts about the Silicon Graphics Octane. So as you can see here, my unit has a front door. Many Octanes lack this front door, and that's because the mechanism's kind of flimsy. It breaks off somewhere, either on the door side or the other. I'm not too sure, but I just know that many Octanes are missing their front doors. So let's turn the Octane on and see what's so great about this. You notice something? There's a red light on, but there's no power light. I mean, see, it's even going into the power on self-test. It's doing its tests. I made it do verboost tests, because why not? Let's stop for maintenance. You notice something? There's no power light at all. Well, I'll show you why there's no power light. Let's remove the front panel here. And here you push these two latches. And you can get to the front of the machine. Now this is where the hard drive bay is. And when I put the first hard drive in that I pulled out of my, uh, my uh, HP 9000, turns out the hard drive was bad even though I recall it working. But IRX was giving me all these confusing cryptic error messages and it kept panicking. But let's let's take a look at some of the fun features first. So you see these you see these little bulb like things here, these like LED like things? Well, these are actually little incandescent light bulbs, and as you can see, they kinda look like they've burnt out, because they have. You see, with the SGI Octane, they actually put these incandescent light bulbs there for the power light because they thought it would be cool and badass. But the air light is just an LED, and so the air light or booting light still works. But the power light, well, that's burnt out on this system. It literally does not light the power light. And this is an extremely common issue on the SGI Octane. And, yeah, as you can see, they're, they're just not lighting up at all, so you just have to rely on the fan speeds. And I'll get to the fans in a second. So right here, you've got these little LEDs, along with a, probably a diagnostic port that was internal to SGI, and... You can see right here, these LEDs are lit. Now, these are LEDs on the front plane, which is the board at the very front with this fan. And... This is where the whole system connects to, and it connects to it via these little, like, these little uh, connectors that look kind of like LGA pin sockets. They kind of look like LGA sockets, but on LGA, there's the pin side, and then there's the, uh, like, chip side. Imagine LGA if both sides were the chip side, because that's what it's like with this SGI Octane. So right here, you can see the back of the Octane. As you can see, Silicon Graphics Octane. And the first fan is spinning, I think. Is it? I can't tell, but it looks like it's spinning. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to shine a flashlight, but the first fan here is... Uh, yeah, I think I can feel something spinning. I feel air coming through it. Yeah, it's spinning. So, as you can see here, it's got this nice metal case, but these boards are connected with that little connector. So here's something I heard in one of the 
Telegram chat, Simon, somebody actually had this, like, one of their SGI Octanes, and they were showing up, they were a show-off, they were showing off everybody, hey, look at my Octane, hey, look at my Octane, it, it's got this cool way where the boards all connect like this, and it's so cool. So he takes apart his, like, Octane one too many times, and it quits working, because these connectors are fragile. This is a common issue you'll read about on SGI forums, like Nicochan. This is a very common issue with the Octane, is the boards will, like, they'll just won't connect to the front board, because they're not just connected normally, they're connected to this front plane. So as you can see, it looks like this nice, rugged, well-built machine. And you got these ports right here, SCSI, uh, audio. You got this 13W3 connector, which is, this is the base model, low-end video card. It's this 13W3 connector. I did the pin break-off trick to get it to work, because I was cheap. And I wanted to get this thing that I got for 25 bars working. And so it looks, it, it looks... Nice. Oh, wait a second. You notice something? Oh, I can't because of the lighting. Let me fix that a bit. Alright, look at this. Fan's not spinning. I mean, th this fan up here, I'm going to shine a flashlight in here. You can see it's spinning. You can just see right through it, but here, this is the power supply fan. It's not spinning whatsoever. And this isn't even the first power supply for the Octane I got a hold of. This is the second power supply I've bought. And the power and the fan is just not spinning. I I had one power supply, okay? It was like an Octane power supply that came with it. The it was in beat to shit shape. The bar was missing, but it, it turned on and it kinda worked. It worked for a bit. And then what happened was it shut down. So I'm thinking, oh, the power supply is getting hot. Let me put a fan there. The CPU shuts down from overheating. Turns out, well, it just froze up, actually, but turns out this one fan is critical to keeping the whole system cool. If this fan fails, your SGI Octane is toast. Literally toast. Because these things get really hot when this fan fails. I mean, they don't call them Octane... For no reason. They don't call it because, heh <laughs> heh, see, it, it's blazing fast. No, they call it that because it probably gets hot. Probably call it that because it gets hot as hell. So as you can see, the fan's just not spinning whatsoever. But the other fans are, they're spinning fine. But this fan, nothing. It's just dead. It's dead, dead, dead. It's a dead fan. It's... I, I... I even... Okay, what I did was I actually... On the first power supply, I thought, you know, maybe the fan's bad. I replace it. I get myself a little clue on what's wrong because I don't... I accidentally forgot to crimp the fan cables. And so I got this cascading error message. I got this cascading error message where it's like all these errors. Oh, numbering can error, numbering can error, PSU failure, numbering can error. And so... I get that error message, and I'm like, oh shit, did I break something? So I reseat the fan connector, I, I get this new Delta fan, by the way, and I finally crimp the fan correctly, and the fan doesn't spin either. The fan also doesn't spin, same power supply, new fan, so I think, you know, logically, maybe the power supply's bad, so I order another one from eBay for like 40, actually it was like 50, 70 bucks. I order another power supply. Same exact issue. So, so far this machine's been a money sink. And I've gotten absolutely nowhere. No progress. Nothing to speak of. It sucks. But you know, you gotta remember there's a reason Silicon Graphics doesn't exist anymore. So I'm gonna turn on the Octane and let it boot. And during that... I'll talk about SGI a little, and me. So a while back, years ago, I got my first Unix box, and it was an SGI 02. We're talking, this was like, it was a base model SGI, okay? It was an 02, it was an R10K with like 128 megs of RAM, 
This, on the other hand, is much higher spec. Well, that was like a 190, 200 megahertz R10K. This is a uh, 400 megahertz single processor, 1280 megs of RAM. And so while that other thing felt like a sluggish slog, this feels a lot faster, more in line to what I would get from Sun and HP 9000 and IBM. And uh, yeah, those systems later on. I don't have a deck yet, but eventually I'll get one. Hopefully. So here's the thing. This SGI looks like it's working great. You can fire up Irix. You can let it start up, but it'll have these weird little SGI issues. The O2 I had was, uh, it had this weird issue, okay, the video board in it. So the video board, um, what would happen is, is, uh, the video board, um, what it would do was it would just not work. I would try recording video footage from it and it would I think it would display it fine but when you actually tried to record shit from it it would shit itself. It would shit itself and it sucked cuz I kinda wanted to do that with my O2 but eventually it fixed itself. And apparently these O2's had connection issues cuz nobody on Nico Chan knew what the problem was but I found an issue on some old unupdated college website. Oh, if you have an issue with RO2, uh, yeah, you have to, like, reseat the video board. Yeah. And eventually it worked. But, uh, here's another thing that's so great about these, uh, SGI Octanes. These are supposed to be the most reliable SGI, but yet, back in my, back when I, like, back at the place I used to get all my other SGI machines at. Let's just say after I got the O2, I kind of shied away when SGI machines came in because I remembered what happened with my O2. I remembered how it was iffy in many ways. And this just proves my hutch right. I mean, this is supposed to be one of the quote-unquote most reliable SGIs, but I've seen people tell me Sony Vegas is great for video editing and that Macs are great machines and are much better than PCs, and that Mac OS X 10.13 is a great fast OS, also known as Mac OS 10, because I got high Sierra. But, the thing is, people say this is great, and then you actually use it, and it sucks, and that's the case with this SGI Octane. My hutch was right, I was like, you know, you know, maybe I should give this a chance at just 25 bucks, I mean, what could possibly go wrong with it? This is what possibly could go wrong with it. It looks like it's running fine. I mean, you could double click on stuff. You could you could open up apps and whatnot. You could open up uh let's go to desktop, customize, screen savers. Let's go run this old screen saver. Hell yeah. Electro paint. Yeah, you see this nice screen saver? It's a great ass screen saver, but there's just one issue with it. You know what that is? Since the power supply fan is bad, let's see how hot it's getting over here. It's it's mm, it's already quite warm. This machine hasn't even been on for like five, ten minutes, maybe ten minutes at most, give or take, and it's already getting nice and warm up in there. Mmm. Eventually, it gets warm enough to the point where I touched like the back handle, like right here. I touched this handle. And it was, like, burning hot. And not long after the SGI shut itself down for me, and I'm like... At first I was like, is it supposed to get this hot? I don't know. And I'm like, then when the, then when the power supply kicked in, I'm like... Oh, shit. So it looks like it's a nice machine. It looks like, you know... This might be a nice Unix workstation to have. And then you realize, well, it's only a good display piece... And that's about it, really. And it's even worse with the Tezros and the fuels and the newer stuff. I mean, I've heard that the, f like, and, and especially the larger stuff, like the or like, not just the Origin, but like the uh, Onyx. You get into those and you start to get lots and lots of flakiness where stuff just doesn't work. 
for no reason. And the fuels, you get issues with the power supplies. I've also heard of motherboard issues on the fuel too. So I'll just shut this thing down. Uh, so that's the thing. It's nice, it's polished, it looks great. But you gotta remember, you're dealing with the maintenance nightmare when you get into SGI stuff. It's not so bad with HP 9000s or uh, Deck Alphas or, uh, or IBM or Sun. Maybe the worst you'll have is the power supply and the ID Prom battery or whatever. But with these, you're opening a whole can of worms when you get into SGI. I mean, even the early stuff. Got a friend with an Iris 3130, rare as hell. Because we're talking 68,000... SGI's. He plugs in the power supply to bench test it and bang like or something. Smoke up a, a cat popped. So he's having to get that power supply up and going because it's got like maybe like 80, 100 ish amps on the 5 volt rail so he's still trying to get that power supply up and going and I wish him the best of luck. And he doesn't have a keyboard and mouse because they're proprietary because that's what they did at the time. So, <sighs> waste of time, waste of money. That's what you get. It's Silicon Graphics, everybody.